guys, Trust Ted here, Tesla owner, Silicon Valley. Today, I'm gonna be installing this N-Phase charger. I'm super excited about it. This is so great because if you have N-Phase inverters in solar panels, um, it can actually charge from all the solar only power. That's an option. So I'll be going through the product, the installation, the functionality, and the price value, and then we'll give it our final rating at the end. If you're not a member, please subscribe. So let's get started. All right, I wanna do a quick unboxing, but you can see my cat is very uh, interested in the box, but we're gonna just push him off, hopefully. Okay, go. There we go. All right, so let's take a quick look here. Open it up. Nicely packaged, move that out of the way. You can see the cover here. And there is the cable, um, the charger. Here is the holster, which will mount. And the charger is in the box here. So maybe it's just easy for me to take everything out and then I'll show it to you. Okay, I just figured I would show you everything out of the kit. So this is the actual holster that you're gonna put into the wall where um, the, uh, the charging end will sit in. Um, what I really like about, the, although it's a J1772, which obviously everybody's moving to the Tesla connector, but um, I have an adapter, so no big deal. This is a really nice hard rubber. It's got a little bit of give to it. So this for sure can, can will be able to withstand drops. It's one of the things that's great about Clipper Creek, which is what Enphase had bought uh, just over a year ago. And so, you know, this charger, I'm really excited because now it's smart. Uh, the Clipper Creek was bulletproof. It worked awesome. It had all kinds of certifications. And if you um, haven't seen my video on making sure you buy a certified charger, you know, definitely do that. Uh, what you'll notice is it comes with a nice, uh, almost three foot pigtail. And so this is a direct connection. Now, this charger is also available with a 1450 plug or a NEMA 650. Um, I'm actually gonna replace a NEMA 650 and I'm gonna go hardwired. But if you do have a plug, either 1450 or 650, make sure you check out my video to make sure you have the right one. I don't want a house fire to start for you. It's super important, so make sure you check that out. All right, anyway, let's get on and let me show you how to do the install on this. Now, before we do anything, um, you need to make sure you shut your power off. So you can see this is my, uh, I have it labeled Clipper Creek charger. I shut it off. It's a 50 amp breaker. Uh, make sure it's off before you do anything else. Okay, you, you can see this is my current Clipper Creek charger. It has the NEMA 650 connector. I actually um, just unscrewed that. Um, and I'm gonna pull that out and direct wire into there. Okay, so I took the receptacle off. I have the ground here and you can see there's the two hots and neutral is not used by Enphase or the previous charger and that's tied off in the back. So we're gonna wire in to these and we'll have the direct connection. But before I do that, I'm gonna actually put a board because I want the charger to go up a little bit more on the wall. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so I'm just putting this board up. I just attached it with a couple of screws. But just to show you what I'm doing, I'm gonna pre-drill some holes. So I'm gonna pre-drill a hole. There's a stud right here, uh, and there's a stud in the corner. So that's why I want this board to be super secure to hold the charger. I do wanna point out that there's the installation instructions that came with it. And in here, there are the bolts um, to, to mount the charger and then also the holster. So you can see these big bolts with the washer. So this is what I'm gonna use to actually mount the charger first, get it kind of in position um, and then connect it up. All right, so I'm starting the wiring connection. And so what I did was I um, threaded this mount uh, through the cover plate. And um, one of the tricks that I like to use is you see this black tape on these two red wires. So I actually tie the wires together with black tape and then I take a plier, twist the wires and then put the nut on. So that's what I'm gonna do with these black wires. I'm gonna tie them together with some black tape here and then I'll twist these together before I put the wire nut on. And that is a really good seal. So that's what I would recommend. Okay, I'm not sure how good you're gonna see it, but I just take some black tape and then I get these wires as close together as I can 
And then you just tape them like this so they're close. And then you tie them together as much as you can, like get them as snug together as possible. And that way, they're really close together, so this helps keep them together, right, obviously. But then, as you take a pair of pliers, you can twist these guys together and you get them basically married before you even start wiring the nut in. And what that does is it gives you even better electrical connection. So that's just a trick. So I'm just gonna twist these together, as you can see like that. And then you know you want, like at the end, you need a little bit of a point because they're gonna have to fit in to the wire nut. So you sort of squeeze and you try to make like a little point. That actually looks pretty good right there. And you can see how they're sort of braided together, um, which is exactly what you want. And then <clears throat> you take the wire nut and you just get that in there. And so if it doesn't fit, this looks like it's in. And so now I'm just gonna twist it until it's super tight. All right, so I mounted the charger and you can see the cable. It's probably gonna take a little bit of time for it to sort of, uh, you know, kind of get accustomed to being wound a little differently. And then what I think I'm gonna do is just mount this up here and this will sit really nice just like that. So this is just regular screws to go into here. So I'm gonna mount it right there. And um, this is really nice kind of out of the way. So um, this will this be the next thing that I do. Just real simple, just the two holes right there. Okay, so we got it mounted and this will take a little time for this cord, I think, to straighten. I'm gonna throw the breaker, we'll have the power come on and then there's an app um, that I, uh, I know that you have to install if you wanna take advantage of the solar and stuff. But let's fire it up, make sure there's no electrical issues, then we can install the app. So the first thing you need to do is install the Enphase Enlighten app. After you get that installed, what you're going to do is go to the menu, settings, profile, and this is if you want to turn on the self-consumption where you have the solar only powering the vehicle. So you'd go in and you enable that. Um, it may take a few minutes to get turned on. Uh, I had to actually contact Enphase because mine wasn't uh, turning on. So anyway, that's enabled and then you will be able to charge at this point. So again, if I just go back and look at the screen here, give you kind of an idea from the other day, here in this chart, you can sort of see where that red triangle is in the, around noon, um, how it used some of the excess solar to charge the vehicle. So it's great, allow the sun to charge your vehicle. All right, I just wanna say I plugged in the Enphase charger and it's set in the app for self-consumption, which means it's using the solar. And now it's winter, so I don't really have a ton of solar being generated, but there is enough to get to this threshold and you can see it's charging just at 10 amps there, um, 220, so like 2.2 or so kilowatts. Um, if the solar generates more, it'll keep you know ramping it up, but that's the difference that's available. And now you get an idea of how you can charge from the sun if you have Enphase inverter and you get this charger. All right, let's wrap up the review for the Enphase charger. For a product, I'm going to give this a five. I had a Clipper Creek, which Enphase bought before. It was really reliable. This is well-built, similar, long length on the cord. Um, so, you know, you can't go wrong there. In terms of installation, you're likely to have an electrician do it, or maybe you have a setup similar to mine where you can do it. I really like that there's a three foot pigtail. I'm gonna give that a five as well. In terms of the functionality, I really wish that the unit would charge in increments smaller than just the 2.4 kilowatt. Um, when the solar is uh, excess of that, it just goes from 2.4 to 4.8 and so on. Um, but other than that, you know, it, the app is nice to, especially again, if you have the Enphase inverters like I do. So that's a four. And then for price, uh, this is the 50 amp circuit version. It's $800. You know, the, yes, that is quite a bit more than a, like a Tesla charger, 
but it's the, uh, you have CCS in case you're, that's for your car and you don't have to worry about solar charging. So if that's like super important to you, um, then, you know, this is obviously an ideal choice. And I'm gonna give that a four. That's a total score of 18. Again, trust Ted, Tesla owner, Silicon Valley. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and look for another review soon.